Whatever, where, where, where do you want to start? That might be the best way to do it. <laughs> what struck me with your training sessions, and the first one I went to was the, the session you gave about the Costa Concordia disaster. Um, and that really sort of pricked up my interest of, well, how is that, how could that be relevant for me in education? I have nothing to do with shipping and really in education, health and safety um, is certainly important, but that's not our prime consideration or, or a consideration in the way that it might be in the oil industry or the shipping industry. Um, but what I was really interested in was the, the change in focus from the disaster was, could be caused, I would say on the old paradigm, the, the disaster is possibly caused because you've either got wrong procedures or you've got somebody that didn't follow the right procedures. And any investigation, it seemed to me, you were saying, would be around those procedures. What are the procedures? Are they correct procedures? If they are correct procedures and they're still a disaster, then clearly it's the people implementing those procedures. And your focus wasn't the procedures. Um, your focus was the captain himself. And what came out to me, and I may have misread it, but what came out to me was there was this dissonance between here are the health and safety procedures, which he overtly should be following, and here is the culture of the organisation, or here are his implicit assumptions about what he's going to do. And that created, um, that, 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 that created a particular risk environment. It was um, not was he competent or incompetent, was he capable or incapable of following the procedures, but what was the relationship of the procedures to his assumptions to his his mental world I found that quite an interesting thing because I, I found myself of when I am having conversations within schools and especially international schools it had really I had had that experience of we have certain assumptions and we don't state those assumptions we don't know what those assumptions are and a lot of the failure to communicate or to fulfill what we want done effectively is because of this unsaid world. And that we appear to be, when we're looking at why we don't do things very well, we are focusing on the wrong thing, just like accident investigations are focusing perhaps on the wrong thing, which I think was part of your argument. Um, and I am very interested in that, and, and you, your latest IQ session, I think, came out in the discussion about the board, which you know, we could perhaps go into in, in a bit more detail, but of that paradigm shift of when you are, when you are trying to understand a situation or understand an event or make plans around that, what are you actually focusing on? Are you focusing on these objects or are you focusing on the mental world of the, of the people involved? And what are you trying to do? Are you, are you seeking to understand or are you trying to um, demand compliance or ascribe blame? Um, and it's that sort of, it's that paradigm shift I was very interested in. And I was very interested in the reactions to it as well. And I would say the Con Costa Concordia training, which was, I think, two or three years ago now, you had a very large group, maybe a heterogeneous group, who were just coming along because they were curious and really didn't know much about your approach. It was interesting the amount of resistance within that group to what you were saying. The group couple of weeks ago in your IQ session that seemed to be smaller, that seemed to be people who already had established a relationship with you and there wasn't that overt resistance, but still there were, it still was in a couple of the, 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 the sessions you did, there still was that challenge of making the 
the paradigm shift. They were still within the old paradigm. They weren't resistant like some people in the first group were, but um, it still was a struggle to actually see what your point was and what the implications of the point was. Any examples? Okay, so the example I've got is you, you, you had, you presented us with, and I, I, I made some notes here of it as well. <laughs> and we will talk about your notes in a while. <laughs> um, which actually, so um, you, you, you showed us a picture of a health and safety board. And, and I, I'm not in that world, but I guess it's some kind of legal requirement that people should have a health and safety board and, and, and certain information should be on that board. And there was a picture of the board and there was a picture of, I think, a guy looking at the board um, who was maybe the person responsible for the board. It, maybe you got that impression from it. And you asked people uh, to come up with some questions about the board. And the, the kind of questions, you were, the first one was, why is it so chaotic? Which was a wonderful question, in a way, for being absolutely, I think, the point that you were making. And it almost, you know, did you plant that person to ask that question? <laughs> why is it so chaotic? Um, and then how is it updated? What's the most important the instruction? And every, every question that was offered by the audience was about the board itself. And this is the existence in the old paradigm. It is, okay, we're trying to improve our approach to health and safety. Uh, let's look at the external objects and let's think about those objects themselves. Not, and then you, you, you prompted people and you used your IQ uh, matrix with the, uh, um, with the, well, you're just thinking about the physical reality of things. And, 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 and you ask people to, to shift their focus to, um, to thinking about the person that organizes their board, what, what their emotional state would be, what, why they had created the board in the way that it did. And you asked people to do that. And that was actually, much, that was clearly a struggle for people. Um, whereas the questions had flowed when it was about the board. And, you know, I'm looking here and, I, you know, there's eight or nine um, questions that people pretty spontaneously gave you. And then, um, and then you, you pointed out, well, all the questions are focused on the board itself. You know, do you realise what you're doing? You said you, all the questions are focused on the board itself. And then you went on to say, ask them to change their focus to, to, to the person. And the first question was, how do you feel about it? And you could kind of see, well, people have got your idea and they're putting it in the broadest possible terms, the broadest possible terms. But it's a real struggle to think of a question. Do you feel the board is useful to you? What do you feel is on the board? You know, people have got the idea of, well, somebody's emotional um, uh, approach is important and they've got the, the feel, but it's a real struggle. It's a real struggle. And you've got about half as many questions in about twice the amount of time for the second one, for, the, for, for when you've asked them to change. Um, and you still have to tell people that there's, there's questions coming in which is about the board because you've interjected with let go of the idea of the board, which is really tough for people. You have to remind people to do that. Forget the board, it's not about the board. Um, it's about the person. But, and that's kind of what I meant by that paradigm shift. And that sort of interaction around the photo, I found a really interesting one of, this was a sympathetic audience. This wasn't like your Costa Concordia audience who were a mixed bag and some of the most vocal were against your ideas. This was a sympathetic audience and still what a struggle it was for that paradigm shift. And did you, did you reflect upon 
the difficulty, what was the difficulty in, in this exercise, in your view, Nick? I think uh, there's two difficulties. Or, and maybe it's not just the exercise, but maybe I'm projecting a little bit as well for a shift, trying to enact a similar sort of shift. I think one of the difficulties is if you focus on the board, um, it, it, it feels like a solution oriented approach. It feels like you're going to get immediate results. So the first question is why is it so chaotic? Clearly this person who asked the question believed that the board was badly organized. And the issue would be, let's get it well organized. Um, and there are certain principles perhaps of organizing a good health and safety board that this person hadn't adhered to. And if you simply told them what those principles were, they would enact this and then you would have a really nice board and you would have a good board. Um, and, um, a lot of the other questions were around the assumption that having this board is a useful thing. You know, how often, is it chaotic? Is it updated often? What is the most important structure? Those were the first things that came, um, uh, came across. And I should imagine, or I imagine that those were the first people to answer and those were the questions that they asked because those were the people within our group who probably had the strongest opinion about how such a board should be organized and from the photo thought that it was badly organized and thought that they would be useful in, in some ways ensuring that it was better organized. And I think this is, the also, this is the temptation in lots of our interactions and when we, when we look at things is we want to get a solution. And we want to get a solution because we believe that's an efficient use of our time. Tick it off the list, move on. I've got it, I've got a nicely organized board now, we can move on. Without realizing, of course, that a year later, you're probably going to come back and it's going to be a chaotic board. <laughs> Nothing changes. Yeah. Nothing's changed no. because you're not there any longer and um, it's it, it slipped back to being this chaotic board or this board that you view as use, useless. But at the moment, you're saying, this is the efficient thing to do. I know how this should be organised. I will tell you how it should be organised. You will do it. We will all be better off. But the paradigm shift you're suggesting is much more of a culture of reflection and understanding. Why is it that this person has organized this board in this way as part of their overall context? It may be chaotic, for example, because it's their lowest priority, because they believe that such a board is completely useless to them, that somebody has demanded that they have uh, uh, have a board, they don't understand why they should have a board, they never look at a board, they are always looking at you know, their phone or whatever for information, why would I look at this board, I, who knows, I don't, I don't know, I'm not in that world, but, um, but this try to understand, the, the uh, deeply understand this environment as a system, as a, as, as a number of interactions with different agendas from different people isn't something that we're used to doing, full stop. And it's also something that almost militates against a culture that we have developed of efficiency and productivity, that, that, that we need to be productive. And I found myself, if schools like oil companies and ships are busy places and people always have something to do. And if you say to people, okay, let's take an hour out of our time just to take an issue and just to reflect upon it, just to think about it, just to talk it through. Are, do we have a common understanding um, of, of this issue? And 
we're not going to minute any action outcomes and who's responsible for doing what. We're just going to maybe record the conversation because it will be good to look back on it. But that's all. We're just going to think it through. People have a tendency to say, that was a waste of time. You did that. What action was taken as a result of it? Um, that's such a powerful thing you say. Like, can I just say a couple of things here? One is that, uh, yes, I agree with you. Um, I, I think I think there's something, from my understanding, there's something really profound here from what you, you picked up, um, is that I think our notion of organizing an organization is very, very much embedded in objects, in managing objects. So, and in that, in that relationship, we see even a human being as an object that needs to be dealt with and fixed and whatever. But the trouble is that that doesn't take us very far. Now, if you start to turn it around to say that an organization is not about managing objects and it's not a set of processes and, and systems, uh, it is an ecosystem, but also at the same time, it is about relationships and people. And, and if and I think that the, 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 the beauty of it is deceptively simple, and that's what scares most people off, that it cannot be that simple, is just, just getting in a conversation, leaving your whatever you have on your mind for a couple of minutes aside, and just listening to the other person to say, what does he think about this board? You know, what, what is his view about this clot, cluttered information on this board? And I, in my view, this is the most difficult thing for most people. And I, I, I still do not know why. Why is it so difficult? Because maybe after living in, in the West for 17 years, I take too much about myself you know, uh, uh, for granted. That, you know, because uh, in some ways my ego has been destroyed, my, my metanoia has been destroyed. Uh, not once, but many, many times because of the career changes, because of geographical moves and, and cultural exposure. But I think for a lot of people, it is difficult to, to listen and understand uh, to the other person. Very difficult. I think the other thing is, and it, it actually related to that, it's very interesting. I, 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 it, very interesting what you're saying about we're focused on objects and we see humans as another object within a process. And I think that is absolutely the case of we feel that you get it in teaching, you know, the, the, the feeling that you can get um, these set lessons and you just follow the, the rules of the lesson. This is what you do now. And the teacher basically has to almost read from the book. Now this is what we're doing. Now, now do this, now do that. And you've got everything in control. And the kid calls out at the wrong moment, turn to page seven. This is what you say. Um, as if you could be perfectly in control of that, that environment. And we could give a template of how to do this. And any complex operation, whether it's teaching or navigating a boat, I'm, that's, that's simply not the reality of how you make judgment calls, um, which I guess is the point about checklists and processes. Is judgment calls aren't made in that way. And nor, nor in fact, would it be desirable to do that. Um, uh, just as a little aside, one of the more amusing ways I found when I worked in China of people disobeying you without confrontation is asking you to explain what you wanted done. And then you would explain what you wanted done. Do you mind writing that down? You'd write it down step by step process. Then it wasn't done. Why? Oh, because this is what you had in step three and this is what you had in step four, but I couldn't see the connection between them. Because of course you can't actually ever write down even simple tasks step by step, you can't. Um, when you think you have, it's somebody willing to fill in a gap. And I found that a really quite interesting form of disobedience without confrontation. Indeed, indeed, <laughs> absolutely. It's doing exactly what, yeah. doing exactly what you're told. Yeah. And the second thing I, I wanted to say was, and you're, abs you're so right when you say, uh, you know, everything it has to be actionable. If it's not actionable, then we have learned nothing as an organization. And, and I think this is another crux of the problem, that far too much of learning is focused on organizational learning, where we, we, are, we are forgetting a very simple thing, that th there is no such thing like an organizational learning. It's individual learning and then 
perceive what how it is perceived collectively but that's the second step the first step is how would that learning impact upon me how does that change me as a person and that is a question we really ask because that's scary, very scary to imagine that after being through this workshop after being through this course after being through this session that I was sitting in for about 2 hours what has changed in my world that is difficult for most people because i think a paradigm shift if there was some specific technique i was learning within my existing paradigm i might go and i might implement that very comfortably but what you're suggesting with the iq matrix is this is a tool that is forcing you to shift your paradigm that's a very that's a much more challenging thing to do because i go back i still have this unconscious assumption that i should be efficient that i should be productive that um everything that comes out of a particular professional interaction is actionable um and now i'm in this world where even if i am beginning to master this idea i have this uneasy feeling that maybe I have just wasted my time and and there is a comfort in those and especially if you're in high responsibility you do a number of things which are just about comforting your anxieties that aren't necessarily very useful and telling an employee how to organize the board is such a thing you come back a year later and it's just as chaotic but at least that's not my fault well <laughs> at least it's this person's fault um and i've got that comfort i told them how to do it and when i left it it was in a good state and maybe nothing actually beneficial has happened but i have eased my own sense of here is an environment where i am taking i have to take responsibility for what goes on but i don't but i don't actually control that environment that's an emotionally tough thing to do um and and, and especially when so much of what we have learned over the years has militated against that you know schools can be places where you are expected to get the right answer and if you haven't got the right answer then that's a failure what did you do wrong what did you do wrong not why did you think that you know let's talk why you think that but what did you do wrong no i'm going to now tell you what you should have done um and you get that from the age of 5 uh, uh right throughout your school career uh, and and taking a risk within school again um is often something that you kind of learn isn't actually necessarily worth it and exams are all about learning to play the game this is what the you know if you've got an exam class you 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 you're, you're giving past papers and you say this is what the examiner is looking for because the examiner actually doesn't care how good you are at the subject they actually care have you fulfilled the requirements according to the matrix that i've got this is what i've been told to look for i had um, a lot of ship managers once they hear this they will smile because that's their world view about how inspections and audits are done on on oil rigs and ships so i'm conscious of the time nick but how would you like to wrap up this discussion around iq there's so much we discussed of course i think the thing that i find interesting in what you're doing and one of the i think why i'd like to track it and what it means for me is it's about a certain type of change management and it's about a, a, a kind of a fundamental change in organizations to reflective thinking organizations and it isn't a simple thing and and this you conceded this point in the IQ session when you know, the guy from a legal background was kind of saying but you do need some processes and checklists that you kind of said well yes you do you do you know you didn't deny that and it was like i was saying i do need the meetings where it is just about we are going to organize this event and we're actually not now going to question our assumptions about what it is because we do just need to organize this event um 
and it's you know there is that that balance between we do need to be efficient and productive sometimes with action points and uh, but and that can actually live live quite comfortably with within a reflective organization that, 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 that it's not a contradiction no it's not but there is a paradigm shift to something else and it is a radical fundamental change and it is so difficult to do, and it was so fascinating listening to these conversations. But great chatting with you, Nick, as always.